here's an example of proving an identity. And before we start, let's just talk about kind of some ground rules. Okay, so the very first rule to remember is that you work on one side only. This is, even though it looks like an equation, this is not um, like when you had something like 2x plus 3 equals 5x minus 1, how you uh, added the opposite to each side, back and forth. That's not what we do here. In a proof, we're only going to work on one side. Uh, so that means we're going to leave the other side alone. All right, so we typically work on the side that looks the most complicated. So work on side that looks most complicated, sometimes. Not always, but that's a good place to start. Okay. Another important rule is to work down words like that, and you're going to show each step. and legible. I need to be able to read it. All right, so let's do an example here. So here's an identity. So we have the sine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x equal to 1 minus the cosine of x over sine x. We want to prove that this is equal. All right, we're going to work on one side only. We're going to pick the more complicated side, and you know what? They both look about the same to me, so I'm going to work on the left-hand side. All right. So the first thing I notice is um, I have a fraction over here on the left, and of course I have a fraction on the right, and it kind of it almost looks like they're opposite each other, but they're not quite opposite each other. But I do notice that when I'm all done, after I've worked this whole problem, I want the sine to be in the denominator, and I want cosine to be in the numerator. All right, so that helps me decide where to go. All right, so I'm going to do this technique. Here's the left-hand side, and no, I'm going to put parentheses around that denominator because it's all together. And I'm going to multiply that by the conjugate. So the conjugate is the same thing but with an opposite sign there. And if I do it on the denominator, I've got to do it in the numerator. Okay. So just a little side note right here. This whole thing right here is big and complicated as it looks. It's really just 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. You can multiply anything by 1 and you do not change the value of it. Okay? So this is what I call multiplying, uh, multiplying by 1. It's just, in this case, it happens to be the conjugate of this denominator. So look what happens when we multiply that out. All right, so the numerator is going to look like this. I'm just going to show it as sine x times that quantity 1 minus cosine x. Now, why did I not multiply that out? Ah, because look here. You're looking for this side here. So I want to end up with 1 minus cosine x. So had I multiplied this out, you know, like the distributive property, that would have ruined the 1 minus cosine x. At this point, I would have had to factor that back out. So that's why I'm just going to show this multiply just like that. All right, now let's multiply the denominator. And I'm just going to do that over to the side to refresh your memory. So remember when you had uh, a plus b times a minus b, which is what this is. You got 1 and you've got cosine x here. So when you FOIL that out, you have a squared plus ab minus 
minus AB minus B squared, and you notice those middle terms cancel each other. So you're left with A squared minus B squared. So when I multiply this out, I'm going to end up with 1 minus cosine squared x. And by the way, perfectly acceptable to do stuff like this over on the side, just like you would do stuff on scratch paper. So perfectly acceptable. Keep our equal sign running here. Okay. Now I'm going to make some substitutions. Um, so this 1 minus cosine squared is going to look familiar. Remember you've got sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Well, if I subtracted cosine squared from each side, I've got sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. This is just another form of the Pythagorean identity. So I'm going to make a substitution here. So in the numerator, I still have sine x times the quantity 1 minus cosine x all over sine squared x. And now at this point, I can simplify. So I've got sine x on the top. I'll show that over here. So I've got sine x on the top, sine squared on the bottom. So when I simplify, this is gone and one of these is gone. And so I end up with, let's squeeze this right in the bottom here. So I end up with 1 minus cosine x all over sine x. And then that's what I wanted. Um, and so you just draw this arrow right down here, like this. And you show, you have now shown that the left hand side through manipulation is equal to